Welcome back, everybody. Joe Everest, the fence expert. Today, we're doing another reaction video. This video is titled, How to Install a Vinyl Fence. And let's dig into it. Hey, everybody. It's Melissa from Welcome to the Woods. We recently installed a beautiful privacy fence in our backyard. I'm going to show you how to install this vinyl fence in hopes that it helps you with your project. The first thing to do is to look for your property pins and make sure that your fencing aligns with city ordinances. This was a complicated process for us and involved paying for a permit and trying to use this metal detector in my yard all over the place to figure out where the right of way was on our road. Also be sure to call all your utilities so they come mark them with flags before you dig. She's absolutely on the right track here because it's always a good idea to call your utility locators. Make sure you know where all your utilities are. And I like that she took the time to locate her property corners and her right-of-way easement markers. The easiest way to line up and lay out your fencing project is to string a line um, along the entire perimeter of where you want to dig. And then we used wooden stakes to mark every eight feet because that was the distance between our vinyl fencing products posts. You certainly can dig your holes by hand, but I would recommend getting a motorized auger. And this was on a dingo. We rented this um, for about $150 for the day, including a dump trailer where we could put our dirt onto. I absolutely agree with this as well. So we actually have we actually have dingoes in service uh, at Ozark Fence at our fencing company. I like them a lot. They're uh, pretty widely uh, put into service by rental companies. Therefore, you usually have somewhere in town that services them as well. We went about three feet with the holes. Um, we're going to be putting in at least 30 inches of cement on each post. To dig this all out would have probably taken weeks, and the dingo did it in just a day. Now, we did have to dig out some rocks by hand, but in general, this made very fast work of the prep process, and I would highly recommend getting a machine like this. So for this massive undertaking, I did have help. This is my neighbor, John, and we hired him to come help me with the fence install because of how labor intensive this job was and because he has an awesome cement mixer that was going to help us with securing down our posts. You can see here that the holes we dug were quite, quite deep. And I would say that digging the holes is one of the hardest parts of this process to get ready for a fence. So plan accordingly. Yeah, so she's not kidding when she says digging the holes is the hardest part. I usually, or sometimes, we'll get questions from customers asking, well, uh, what if you just set the post and I finish the rest of the fence? Could you give me a number on that? And the problem with that is the majority of the labor cost is in digging and setting these posts. There's not a huge cost savings uh, to, to have us set the post and for the homeowner to come in and finish it. I want to show you a cool trick here on how to get the majority of the dirt out of your grass. My neighbor, John, uh, told me that if you use a concrete placer, you'll see it here, you can actually scrape up the dirt into a pile much easier. And I cannot believe how clean my grass was after we did this. I would just go about it with a rake, but this worked way better. That's a great tip. You know, I've never heard of using uh, the, the concrete placer as in, in use of or in place of a uh, rake, but man, it does look like it did a great job. Once you've got everything prepared with the holes, you're going to restring your line and dry fit all of your posts. The line is going to serve two functions. One is to keep the fence straight um, because you're going to align one side of your post with the string line. And then the second thing that it's going to do for us is keep the depth correct. So we are going to be using, um, do you see the opening in the post? The bottom of that opening aligned with the string to make sure that all of our posts are set to a the same depth. So across the top of the fence, it looks level. On the corners, your string gets tied off both directions. Some of the holes we had to dig by hand just a bit deeper because you want to make sure when you're cementing your posts that the bottom bells out so that there's cement underneath the post as well. So that's a great tip on belling out the bottom, making sure that the bottom of that hole is wider than the top of the hole. Uh, one of the things it does really well is it prevents frost heave. So if you're in an area that frost heave is common, belling out the post is going to make it more difficult for the frost to heave that post out of the ground. Fortunately, John had this big cement mixer that made mixing up big batches of cement and hauling it in wheelbarrows a breeze. But I have heard that some 
types of quick set concrete can be mixed in the hole, so you might want to look into that if you're doing a fencing project. You can see in this step that we put some cement down at the bottom of the hole and I'm using this 2x4 that we cut to a very specific um, length of 90 and 3 quarter inches <laughs> so that it came out that the center of each of our posts was 8 feet exactly. Now we are going to check level both ways and John's helping by moving the bottom of the post to kind of get it where we need it to be before we press it down into the cement that's in the bottom of the hole. So that's a good tip about using a jig or the, in her case, the two by four, uh, cut exactly to the width you need it to make sure every panel fits exactly right. Now in her instance, that's going to work fairly well. It looks like your yard's fairly level. Where the jig doesn't do so well is in when you have a really sloped yard, it's going to throw your measurements off a little bit. Just keep that in mind that using a jig will work in probably 90% of the installations. But if you have a yard that has a lot of terrain, a lot of hills or falls, uh, then you're going to want to you're going to want to think about a different uh, method of figuring out exactly where those posts need to be placed. One method that was very helpful if you need the post to move just slightly to make it level is to put a two by four down into the bottom of the hole and push against the post in the cement. So it's so important that your post is level on both sides, both ways, um, and not not pushing against your line. You want it to be just barely touching the line. This is so that all of the pieces fit together properly when you go to assemble. So in order to keep our level, instead of having somebody, you know, come back and check that it hasn't moved, we just braced it both ways. So we kind of created a tripod with these pieces of wood and we clamped it to the post. The other end of the wood beam that's using to prop up the post got a wooden stake uh, pounded into the ground next to it and then we drilled those two together. This just makes sure nothing moves and it allowed our post to cure perfectly level up and down. Don't forget before you brace the post to check your depth and make sure that the height of the post is aligned with your string. Between each set of two posts I pulled up our spaced 2x4 and checked the top as well just to make sure everything was looking level and correct. So that's a good catch on that too is, is a lot of times even if you check the plumb of the post Sometimes the top of the post can get out of line from the bottom. Not necessarily in vinyl where you know that every post is straight and true, but on wood posts where not every post might be exactly the same uh, measurement at the bottom that is the top. Always check both bottom and the top before you move on. We filled all of the holes with cement up to about two to three inches below the grass line and let the cement harden and cure. Then I cleaned up the cement in the grass around the hole and put black dirt as a top layer. Now we get to move on to the very easy part, assembly. So we're going to assemble the posts by first starting with a bottom rail. And this rail has an aluminum insert. So that's nice. So w if you are looking at vinyl fence, one of the things to key in to consider would be, does that bottom rail include that aluminum stiffener in it? Um, on some of the vinyl styles, they don't come with aluminum stiffeners in the bottom, and that's when you start to see, over time, that section sag. Uh, make sure, like I said, if you're looking at vinyl fence, that that bottom rail does, in does include an aluminum stiffener to provide extra strength. And then um, this just has plastic tabs on each end that pop into the holes on each post. Then you align a small plastic C-channel on each of the posts on both sides. This is going to cover the um, ends of the tongue and groove mechanism on the actual slats. These are as simple as screwing three screws into each channel. Now I'm starting in one of my C-channels and pushing the slat down into the bottom as well as into that C-channel. Then the tongue and groove mechanism on each of these just click together. It's so easy and I can put together one of these panels very, very quickly. Near the end you want to put the last piece in first and then slide the in-between piece to make it all fit together. That's another good tip there is, is putting your end piece in first and then your second to the last piece in. Uh, it, I can't tell you how, how many times as a kid when we were building final fences, like that's a trick that the uh, that the old hands love to play on the new guys is putting together these sections. And uh, eventually you figure out that trick. But I like that she showed that. I like that she showed it here. The section is complete when you add the top rail in. And this also has plastic tabs that hold into 
the um, the hole on the post. And so you're just going to slip that over the top of each of your slats and then push those tabs in on both sides and you're done. The post where you're going to install a gate, you need to put in these metal I-beam inserts to give it enough strength to withstand being used like open and closed like that. So uh, we decided to do a double gate um, so that we could fit a car through. So it's just shy of eight feet wide. So that's kind of strange. Usually when you see the aluminum stiffeners used in gate posts, the ones I've seen, uh, the aluminum stiffener is typically set to depth with the post. It uh, looks like on that one it was cut at whatever the height of the fence was, six foot in this case. Um, it's kind of interesting. Like I said, usually you see them set at the same time that the gate post is set. And we just had two four-foot swinging doors. Um, you can see here the next day that I got that installed, just putting the hinges on, and then we did a latch on the inside so we can lock the gate and keep our backyard super private. Before our privacy fence was installed, our backyard butted up to a road, and now that we have six feet of no visibility, the road is totally cut off, and our yard is so much more private and safe for our children to play. I absolutely love it. Well, guys, looks like she had a great experience building that vinyl fence as a, as a fencing professional. I think it looks incredibly good. I think she did a really great job. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Until next time, I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors.